I'm Jessica Romano with Carnegie Museum of Natural History. Today I'm talking to John Wenzel, entomologist and director of Powder Mill Nature Reserve. John, there's been a lot of talk lately about murder hornets. Can you describe these insects and how they got their name? Yeah, this is uh, the largest hornet in the world. Its scientific name is Vespa mandarinia, and it's found only in East Asia. Uh, they're best studied in Japan, and sometime in the last year, 2019 or possibly 2018, uh, these things were introduced to North America. They're in British Columbia and Washington state, uh, very local right now. Uh, hornets are not the same as bees. They are predatory. And this particular group of hornets, this one and several of its relatives in Asia, are predators of other bees and hornets. And they attack the nest and feed on the brood. So they would uh, attack a bee colony kill the workers as they're entering, and then eat the bee larvae inside the nest. So if this is an insect typically found in Asia, how did it get to North America? Almost all these introductions, and there are many of them around the world, are the result of regular commercial traffic in other goods. So a queen hornet who's planning on hibernating for the winter goes into a stack of boxes someplace, and then the shipper picks that up and puts it on a plane and sends it someplace like Vancouver. And then when that box is unpacked, then that hornet gets out and now it's in a new place. And so what is the threat or the concern for these insects? Well, these are big, fearsome looking insects and uh, they're scary. So nobody really wants to have them around. So there's that part that it's just a scary insect. There is actually some real threat posed to beekeepers because since these are specialist predators on bees, when they find a bee colony, they'll raid it. And a small number of hornets can destroy an entire colony of bees. So that really is a threat. And in addition, they probably pose some threat of damage to fruit crops. In the autumn, hornets will usually chew into fruit. So they'll attack your apples or peaches or pears or something. And then you can't sell a fruit that's got all these bites out of it. I don't think that the threat to people is as great as our anxiety is. Um, they're not really looking for us. If you leave them alone, they leave us alone. But they're big, scary animals. Uh, several reports have misrepresented the power of the venom of this animal. Because it's a big one, it has a lot of venom, but the venom is not actually that powerful. In fact, it's less powerful than the venom of a honeybee. So John, would this insect be able to find its way here to Pennsylvania? Well, if it got bundled up in some shipping goods and got shipped across the continent, yeah, it could get here the same way it got here from Japan. Uh, but really, I think it's extremely unlikely that they're going to be able to cross the Great Plains by themselves. In about 1850, another big hornet, the European hornet, was introduced to the vicinity of New York City. And in 150 years, that one has spread throughout the eastern U.S., but it's never gotten across the prairies. And so I don't think the Asian hornet's going to get across the prairie either. What sort of damage have these insects done in places like Japan? Well, in Japan, it poses a real threat to beekeeping. And so beekeepers try very hard to find these nests and exterminate them. Uh, the hornets usually nest in cavities. They'll nest underground or in the void of a wall or something like that. But when you find the traffic of the workers coming and going from a hole, then you know that there's a nest in there. And at that point, you should call a professional exterminator. The bees themselves have developed a very interesting defense, which is when the hornet invades the nest, the bees, and we're talking about like 100 bees, pile around the hornet, and then they vibrate their wings rapidly in order to generate heat. And they can raise the temperature of this ball of bees up to 110 or even 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. And that heat will kill the hornet. And the bees themselves can tolerate it because the inside of a bee colony is about the same as our body temperature. So bees can tolerate the heat for a short time, whereas the hornets cannot and they call this heat balling. They make a ball of bees, raise the heat, and kill the hornet. It'll be very interesting to know if the other bees, for instance, our bees here, 
somehow have in their ancient programs the same defense. Well, thank you so much, John, for all that great information. Nice talking to you, Jessica.